A Life in Laughter. Café Conversations with Madeline Smith. In conversation with Bill Lawrence. Episode 1. And in this conversation, Maddie talked about how she walked through her convent school gates and out into London's swinging 60s. So we want to know about Bieber. Everybody want to know about Bieber, how that originated, yes? Well, when I was 15, my first job was in a store, a very exciting store in Richmond-upon-Thames in Surrey. And it was called Kempthorne. And I had a job selling skinny sweaters. And that attracted a lot of young people because in about 1965, which it was then in the mid-60s, skinny sweaters were the thing. If you were an it girl, you wore a skinny sweater, never mind your figure. And I had several skinny sweaters, and I do remember that when I washed them, they stank, because they were all made of wool, and they ponged. I don't know what they dyed them with or what, but I, I remember my very pongy skinny sweaters. And they also lost all the skinniness as well, because I think in some kind of a way they'd been shrunk or something, and you washed them, and the shrinking went. So anyway, that's another story altogether, and a big disappointment. So I'm standing there one day on a Saturday, earning my one pound for the day. And a beautiful girl came in, wearing a black dress. And I stared at her long eyelashes and I said, where did you get that frock? It hardly covered her body, I have to tell you. And she said, what? Huh. Bieber, of course. So I said, where's that? And she said, well, that's a fashion shop in Kensington, London in Abingdon Road and I said "Ooh, how do I get there and she told me to take the 27 bus so I took the 27 bus of course I did and I found myself in what can only be described as Wonderland I fell madly passionately in love it was pitch black in there it had been an old chemist shop and it was owned by a lady called Barbara Halaniki and Barbara was of Polish descent and came here after the war and opened this amazing shop with her own designs. Well, my first passion was a very, very short frock with cap sleeves and it was pink and white stripe with little pearl buttons around the neck. I went home jubilant and thereafter I opted out of many A-level classes at school and took the 27 bus all the way down Kensington High Street, hopped off at Abingdon Road and nipped into Bieber's. There were coat stands, or hat stands, I think they were actually, but on which Barbara Halaniki had hung coats and frocks and large, mostly purple boas, because purple was very in that year, 1965. And I was a very happy girl. And I begged the manageresses, who were nipping in and out all the time in the dark and the gloom, Please, when I leave school in two years, can I come and work here? And so, July 1967, I took my last slurp from the water fountain, if you can call it a water fountain. Uh, disgusting thing. Uh, gosh, with COVID now, I wouldn't even want to think about it. But anyway, I put my lips for the last time. I embraced the water fountain in the hall of my convent school and I ran out of that place and was very quickly running into Bieber, where I started my first day. Well, I was nearly 18, but I have to tell you my great disappointment was that by this time, two years on, Bieber had moved to Kensington Church Street. It wasn't half so much fun, and Barbara Halaniki was having a baby that year, and the fashions had really dropped off something terrible. However, 
I did enjoy my job there. It was very, very hard work. And I became 18 that August. I didn't actually know what I was doing. And they took terrible advantage of you. You were there literally from dawn until night selling these terrible frocks. And of course, one of my stories is that we had to look for shoplifters, of which there were many, because these, the, the, you know, the shop was so pitch black. And the changing room was downstairs in the basement. And I thought that I would try and revive my, <laughs> my brain, what was left of it, with Dostoevsky. And I borrowed a book from the library, The Brothers Karamazov, of all things, yes. And I had this book under my arm and I thought, well, I'll have a little sit in the changing room in the gloom. And while everybody's trying on their frocks and their T-shirts, I'll read The Brothers Karamazov. Well, I have to tell you that that's the day that I very politely got given the sack. Yes, it's true. What did you the, do? the chief manageress came up to me in the gloomph and she whispered into my ear, Maddie, she said, somehow I have the feeling you're not cut out for this. And I said, what makes you think that? Anyway, she said, I suggest that you give in your notice <laughs> very politely and that you disappear in a week in a puff of green smoke, which I did. During the six weeks that I worked there, Biba or Barbara or whoever at that time, um, requested that I did a little bit of modelling with their dresses and I, and I did a bit of modelling in a wonderful studio in Holland Park, a um, studio of a photographer called John Cowan and it was in that studio that the film Blow Up was made. That's very historic. Anyway, I did some nice photos there and after I'd got the sack, because I was incredibly cheeky, uh, it wasn't so much the sack as a kind of, well, a polite by you leave, <laughs> and I did leave. Anyway, I took my photos in that had been taken um, by John Cowan's assistant on the day that I did the modelling for Bieber and um, Barbara Halaniki got to hear about this. I showed all my friends and she called me into the back room where all the cutting and all the exciting things went on and she said, would I consider being her model for her first proper catalogue? And of course I squeaked in my little high-pitched voice because I talked like that in those days. And, uh, and, uh, and come the next Sunday, there I was, having these wonderful dresses actually made on me, which was amazing. I do have to add that while I was working there, I was given a free dress every week. But you were expected to wear it all week, but then you took it home, so I had many free beaver frocks. Anyway, I did her first catalogue. It was wonderful, and we we it was um, done, photographed, in a fantastic studio in Riding House Street next to the BBC. And a wonderful photographer called Donald Silverstein, and he virtually lay on the floor and looked up into your nose holes and photographed you from below, so that you ended up looking most peculiar, but of course very with it. And the catalogues were black and gold. And if you're very clever, you can still buy them on eBay. Very with it. Now, that's a very 60s phrase. Really? What do you mean by with it? With it. With up, it. up to the minute, up to the mark, uh, fashionable, yeah, in the zone. Yeah, that's what it means. Mini it, skirts? It, mini skirts, mini skirts. Um, Thick eyeliner? Just, well, the mini skirt was more really just knickers, actually. They were so short that, that, that it was as though you had put a belt above your pants. And so, of course, everybody, you know, when you went up and down on the bus, everybody had a, well, you know, an eyeful, shall we say. Um, I don't think we realised at the time. Um, but so innocent, Maddie. Yes, we were. But at that time also came little woolly shorts. And right. I had some shorts, mini frocks. And, of course, these dresses were dirt cheap. All of fashion in London at that time was dirt cheap, actually. When I think about prices now, it make, make, makes me squirm. Um, and, of course, there was Aussie Clark, Bieber, Mary Quant, uh, there was a lovely shop called, I can't remember, was it something like Caterpillar or something? I can't remember anyway. Um, very few shops in point of fact, actually. And so you had your pick, there was the King's Road, there was Carnaby Street, and there was Kensington, and that was about it. I'm talking of London, of course. I mean, outside London, obviously there were other lovely fashion houses, but in London, it was really, there was Bus Stop, was next to Bieber, 
Bieber, Bus Stop, Mary Quant, Ozzy Clark, that's all I can think of at the minute really. What sort of people would turn up in Beaver? They'd be quite well off and young. And well, a lot of tourists, actually, strangely enough, word had got out because she'd been at it for years by now. Um, remember, I was still at school when, when, when Bieber started up. So um, a lot of Americans came in. I do remember that. And I remember getting very annoyed with them uh, because they would hang around too long and they kind of spoiled the atmosphere. They, 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 they made it a little bit too... I don't know, a, a, a bit crowded, more like a sort of airport in a way. The whole joy and beauty of Bieber was that it was supposed to be extremely unfriendly. We were terribly unfriendly, all of us, and <laughs> we were cool dudes. So, uh, so. And of course, and tourists are incredibly friendly, so you, you had to sort of come out of your icy shell and, uh, and sort of, you know, woo them in a funny kind of a way. So the whole ethos at that time was being cool. So what was your ethos at that time, Maddie? So you're... Literally, school. I have hopped out six you're, weeks you're there before. You're in your miniskirts. Yes. Mm -hmm. With all these people around you, famous people yes. coming in and out. Yeah. Stealing, oh, yes. Stealing your clothes, your yes. dresses. Yes. Smoking their drugs. All sorts of things, yes. What were you thinking? What's next for Maddie? Well, I knew that this wasn't going to be the be-all and the end-all. And in point of fact, I'd already been spotted in the road anyway by that time and was given a couple of days off to film um, some strange, had a part in a strange Italian film where I was going around on a bicycle and playing a Zita with a very famous Italian actor called Lino Capolicchio. And when he got back to Italy, having filmed his couple of days with me, the rest of the film was spent, I think mostly in bed actually, with Claudine, I've got to pronounce this right, Claudine Auger, Auger later to become a Bond girl. In fact, I'm not quite sure she may already have been a Bond girl. I'm not quite sure what year she was. People are going to shout at me, aren't they? But this was 1967. So as we leave 1967, what do you see as the next step forward for Maddie? Going back to school, actually. Getting those A-levels and going to university. That actually was in my mind. However, I did think this was lots of fun for now. I think I'll go and be a model. So... I trotted along to Bond Street to Lucy Clayton because I'd heard of Lucy Clayton and I had always absolutely adored Jean Shrimpton and I knew she was a Lucy Clayton model. So I knocked on the door and very nice man, his name was Leslie Kark and he actually owned Lucy Clayton model agency and he said, very nice, lovely to meet you but you're not tall enough. So off I go and I thought, oh, I'm not having that. <laughs> Next day I went back again. <laughs> I can't believe it really, thinking about it now. Went back again, went up the same staircase in Bond Street and a really nice lady said, yeah, we'll take you on. Don't see you doing catwalk, but you can do beauty shots and things. Would you do that? And I said, yes. And then they said, well, you've got to go and get your test shots. Here's your list of all the photographers and you go and meet them all, get some free photos done, have a portfolio, buy some nice clothes and some wigs and some fur coats oh where am i going to get the money from and then we will see you again so i did exactly that i had my little list and i went off and nearly got myself into all sorts of trouble but that's another story that was episode one of a life in laughter with madeline smith